a place in which memories are method, method, with method uh, are stored and retrieved. The ability to access memories in this way used to be called the art of memory. Of course, that was long before Google and the internet. In the partition film I'm working on, I'm obviously interested in history, history which undergirds memory. I explore people's memories about pre-partition India by interviewing refugees on both sides of the border. And I set those memories against a collective history that refashioned identities in more nationalistic ways. There was a need to construct a brand new and distinct identity for Pakistan, while at the same time, there was a desire to redefine India in, certain, in terms of certain traditions and create a specific national narrative. A couple of days ago, my friend Ruth Beck sent me a copy of Howard Brenton's play, Drawing the Line, which she saw in London recently. As I started to read the play, I was thrilled to come across this conversation between Jinnah, the leader of the Muslim League, and Radcliffe, chairman of the Boundary Commission, which carved up India in six short weeks. This is Jinnah speaking. India is not a nation or a country. It is a subcontinent of nationalities, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, Tamil, Farsi, they are Arabs on the West Coast. They are Jews. 2,000 ethnic groups. Four major languages. You British make this mistake every time you colonize. You move into a huge area of the globe and call it a country when it is not. You have done so all over Africa, in Arab countries, in Iraq. The same ideas are articulated by Pankaj Mishra in Exit <coughs> Wounds. He talks about how in a land where cultures, traditions, and beliefs cut across religious communities, few people had defined themselves as exclusively of a particular faith. For example, the Pashto-speaking Muslim in the Northwest Frontier Province had very little in common with the Bangla-speaking Muslim in the Eastern Province of Bengal. The British policy of defining communities based on religious identity radically altered Indian self-perceptions. Many Indians stopped accepting the diversity of their own thoughts and began to ask themselves in which box they fit. The partition of India is characterized by immense sectarianism and violence. Yet I believe that the violence was misconstrued. It was framed intentionally as the product of ethnic and religious incompatibility but it was in fact the result of trying to divide the indivisible, of trying to force static identities where none had existed before for centuries. As we surf, browse, and scan our way through information on the web, our ability to concentrate and indulge in profound long-term thinking has become limited. Memory is no longer codified and transmitted meticulously from generation to generation. It's become malleable and more prone to invention. Invented collective memory is what allows us to manipulate the past in order to create a more cohesive, homogenous, and nationalist view of the future. But as Edward Sey concludes in Invention, Memory, and Place, collective memory doesn't need to be for purposes of exclusion. It can also be used for liberation and coexistence between societies whose proximity requires a tolerable form of sustained reconciliation. That brings me back to the poetry of Yi Yang Yi, who believes that if the world is fractured, the work of poetry is to marry everything, to integrate everything. I can only hope that it's also the work of art and film. I would like to end with the opening lines of Lee's poem, Restless, in which he addresses his Chinese-American mother. I can hear in your voice, you were born in one country and will die in another. And where you live is where you'll be buried. And when you dream, it's where you were born. 
And the moon never hangs in both skies on the same night. And that's why you think the moon has a sister. That's why your day is hostage to your nights. And that's why when you can't sleep, uh, and that's why you can't sleep except by forgetting, and you can't love except by remembering. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoyed it.